Okay, so this is my 2.2 liter Ecotec engine in my 2008 HHR. I am in the middle of doing a timing chain replacement on it uh, for a pretty stupid reason. I don't really have to be doing this right now. Uh, I was simply trying to replace the tensioner for the main chain, which is this chain right here. And basically when I went in there, and it's probably very hard to see, but you see that chain running down there. That one down there. Well, there's a tensioner. That bolt looking thing down there, that is the tensioner for this chain. What happened was I went to go replace that, that thing back there and when I took the old one out, uh, apparently some chain slack fell down to the crank sprocket, which I'll show you. Right here. Literally right here. I guess, you know, this is the uh, pivoting tensioner uh, guide shoe. And what happened was when I pulled it out, this thing tilted, as you can see, it tilts backward that way and it allowed some chain slack to come down here and it threw off this mark right here so I turned it on and it skipped a link and it had a code so $30 part caused me to have to go back and reset the timing which at that point you might as well put a new chain and I put a new secondary uh, tensioner which is that thing um, so a $30 part that I should have just left alone basically has caused me to have to take apart all this, which is a real pain in the you know what. But I haven't found a single picture or video online of actually, if your timing is screwed up, how to know where to start. And everyone, of course, says yes. Um, you know line up the exhaust mark at roughly 10 o'clock and the intake mark at roughly 2 o'clock and you're actually at top dead center cylinder number one exhaust stroke as you can see hard to see but the lobes are actually on num number one just past top dead center or it's about to you can see right here and yeah, no you really can't there you can that's the intake lobe has just passed and what you'll notice is back here cylinder number four both intake and exhaust lobes will be in this orientation they'll be kind of like facing each other because that valve that that one is pretty much totally closed so anyway you know, this procedure involves replacing these two sprocket bolts and torquing them also which I just found out you're going to need a new bolt for your crankshaft uh, pulley and it actually gets torqued to 74 foot-pounds plus an additional 75 degree angle. Um, so I am currently waiting. I can only find one at a dealership, Chevy dealership. Can't find them at AutoZone or anything like that. You can probably get them online. But of course, everything is closed until the next couple days because it's a Labor Day weekend. So uh, can't really put it back together. But anyway, it's not incredibly difficult. There's just a ton of stuff to remove. Like the engine is of course suspended with a jack. Um, you wanna make sure everything stays clean. Uh, these are gonna be hard to torque. I can tell you that right now. You gotta put a wrench right here, hold this while you torque it. And uh, so yeah, all this for a $30 part. And uh, I don't know how you really avoid that all that slack happening down there but anyway 
you can see that these are the intake sprocket bolts. These just get thrown out. This is the crank bolt. Apparently got to have a new one of those for some reason. I'm probably going to put that one on and start the motor up just to see that I've done everything right. I mean, I'm not going to leave it on there. So at this point, I am at the point of reinstalling the cover. So I've cleaned all this. We'll break clean the ceiling surface. That's going to go back on shortly. But anyway, yeah, that's a, uh, this is how you want it to look when you install it. I obviously you can see right here, I made these little marks. I mean, this is a little bit rotated this way, but I made those marks to know exactly where my cams are supposed to be. Down here, there's really no marks to be made. You'll just notice that, see that line right there? Right there. You want that keyway to be pretty much even with that straight up. This is a little bit rotated because I've already put the chain on and messed with it. But this is basically where you want to be to install and make sure those links are going to line up correctly. Now this is a, I think, engine tech kit. It was definitely cheaper than the Cloys kit. But the Cloys kit, you see this link is blue. This link is also blue and so is the one down there by the crank sprocket. On the Cloys kit and most other kits, this intake link will be a different color to, so you know where to put. But obviously you just gotta look and say, hey, here's one and there's one right next to it. So obviously these have to go on the sprockets to be that close. It obviously wouldn't go down. So anyway, this is the ripped apart 2.2 liter engine. I was originally trying to fix the uh, rattling timing chain tensioner issue that these uh, 2008 and prior engines have. If you have an 09, you probably don't need to do this. If you have a 2010, you're going to have to deal with variable valve timing sprockets, which this does not have, thankfully. Um, not a really huge deal. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to give a couple tips there to anyone who's trying to do this job. Not an incredibly difficult job, just a pain, and you better make sure that you have replacement bolts for the crank sprocket and these sprockets. And also make sure you have a new uh, serpentine belt because mine was really crappy and I didn't even think about it. Cracks all over the place. Unfortunately, I should have bought a new one online, but I didn't feel like making another online order, so I got this Duralast. 18 bucks, that's the part number. So that's all you need. All right, any questions, hit me up in the comments. I'll try and answer them if I know the answer. Other than that, uh, good luck with your, your projects. I'll see you next time, Golden Projects.